Okay, we'll see how this goes. This is our um, review for week 11. Uh, real quick, the total number of roots comes from the degree in the polynomial. So if you had something like x to the fifth, like we do down here in question four, that would have five total answers when you solved it out. Types of roots that have conjugates, um, that is going to be our imaginary roots uh, and our irrational roots. So anything that has a square root still in it, um, or if it has i in it, those are going to come in conjugate pairs, which means you have to have the positive and the negative version. The shortcut for multiplying conjugates, uh, if we look, I've got a little example here. The shortcut for multiplying conjugates is you just have to multiply the first, which is x squared, and the last, negative 9i squared. Um, this is not something you need to write down in this section necessarily, but just remember that i squared equals negative 1. That's kind of something you need to keep in the back of your mind uh, to review. Okay, so number 4, dividing. This, if you read the directions, it says write your answer as a polynomial and a remainder which means it's very likely that you're not going to get zero in this bottom box. That's okay. Um, it is not asking you to solve further. It's just asking you to do the division one time. Remember that when you um, pull your root from parentheses, you need to think opposite. So instead of using six, you need to use negative six. I think all of you remember this, but just as a quick review, we're going to bring down the first one. And then it's just a cycle of multiply, add, multiply, add. Um, you may want to pause and work that out if you haven't had a chance to and make sure we get the same numbers. Also remember that these coefficients, these numbers right here, are coming from the coefficients in the problem. Whatever number you get at the end is your remainder. That's how I'm getting negative 4. And then I figured out what these were by counting backwards. So you might count backwards and even right in yours, you've got x to the 0, x to the 1, x squared, um, until you get until you finish your numbers. Okay, the next problem says state if it's a factor, which means this is a yes or no question. Is it a factor? So if I look here at question 5, um, to know if it's a factor, I need to know if this bottom box is 0. And notice... Look at what I have here as my top number. So I'm going to kind of block that out for a second. If you look at my top numbers and the problem's top numbers, notice that I put an extra number in there. That's because when you try counting down, you've got 3, 2. They're missing p to the 1, so I know you've got a, I've got to squeeze a 0 um, in there as a placeholder. Don't forget to do that. So the reason that I got no here is that when I worked it out, I had negative 7 in the end, which is obviously not 0, so it's not a factor. Okay, next problem, it says state the rational roots. Uh, I'm sorry, state the possible rational roots. Possible should make you think P's and Q's. All right, so we're going to do P at the end, Q in the front. We list all our numbers that we can use to multiply to give us those. Um, and then we just need to make fractions, and remember it's P over Q, plus or minus. So I, what I do is I take all of my P values, divide by the first Q value. So that's where I got all the whole numbers, because if we divide by 1, that just makes whole numbers. Then I take all of my P values and divide by my next Q. That's where I'm getting all of these fractions with 3 on the bottom. Okay. Find the last two rational roots using the quadratic formula. You should think, I need to be doing the song here. All right, so um, I'm going to move up so that we can see. So the song, the first thing we want to do is label what are our A, B, and C. And notice, the same way we had to check up here if anything was missing, you should always check. And you've got 6n squared. We're missing the n to the 1. So when I label A, B, and C, I got 6 0, and 10. Okay, then I'm just working my formula out. You've got negative 240 here. Uh, that seems big, but it isn't really that bad. Know that you've got to actually break this down. So 
That's what I'm, you may need to pause at any point to work that out for yourself. That's what I'm doing down here in this corner is I'm breaking down um, negative 240. I'm pulling out negative one, which is gonna be my I value. These whole numbers, or these pairs, sorry, make whole numbers. And then the three and five have nothing to pair with, so they stay stuck underneath the square root. And if you notice, I multiplied them back together to turn them into a 15. So I ended up, all of this was equal to 4i square root 15. When I plug that in, now zero plus or zero doesn't change anything, whether you add it or subtract it. So I can even drop that, right? I can drop my zero. And I actually made a little mistake writing here. That should say plus or minus. I can divide, if I look at my whole numbers, they're both divisible by four. So I got i square root 15 over three. And it says, remember the directions say two roots. You should have two answers. Well, I do. I have the positive version and the negative version, which is the whole reason we write plus and minus. All right, here's, here we go. Here's our back page. The directions on this first problem tell us to find all of the roots. So the first thing you should ask yourself is how many answers should I have? And notice this is to the fourth. So at the end, we won't be done until we have four answers. So just kind of keep that in mind. We need four answers. Um, I'm covering up my work so it doesn't seem so overwhelming. They tell us that one of the roots is one-third. Normally, you would use your calculator to find that, right? You would look in your table for your zero, but if they go ahead and give you one, then you can use that. You don't need to use your calculator to get started. So you all are pretty good at this. You know the first thing you need to do is to work out this division problem. So I would do that first and see what you're going to be left with. I'm going to cover that up. I'm just trying to keep it from being overwhelming. So when I worked that out, I knew it, I knew I did it correctly because I had zero. And then I took these numbers and rewrote my new problem. Remember counting backwards. Zero, one, two, three. All right, then I took that problem. And again, now they gave us one root, but you can look in your calculator and see if this one has another root. So I looked in my calculator and I figured out that negative two is a root. Remember to use your new numbers now. So we're, we're like done with this old problem. We've made it smaller. Now we're using our new numbers. We're going to work that out again. And it got zero. I know that I did it correctly. And then I'm going to rewrite my problem, which is where my arrow is going. Okay, so now I'm over here. I've got this new problem. Now, I know if I type this in my calculator that I'm not going to find any more roots. There's nothing else um, in my calculator calculator as far as the zero goes in the table, so I'm going to have to do quadratic formula. So you may want to put a note for yourself. If there's nothing left in the table, you have to do quadratic formula. Now, these numbers are going to get really big in quadratic formula, so I'm just giving you a hint. Because I could take a three out of all of them, I did so, because I want smaller numbers to work with. All right, that's, that's where I'm getting this problem. If you don't do that, it's okay. It's just that you're going to have to break down some probably really, really large square root number. Okay, so remember I'm doing quadratic formula, so I labeled my A, B, and C. Worked out what I got. This one was pretty nice. Um, if you simplify first by taking that 3 out, you only have to take the square root of 41, which doesn't even break down. So automatically I have my two roots. And remember, I need four total. So I have negative two and one third. Those were both up here when I did my long division, or sorry, my synthetic division. And then I have 11 plus uh, square root of 41 over four, and then I have the, the negative version. So those are my one, two, three, four roots. All right. Name any additional zeros that exist, but that may not be listed. So if I look at my problem, this is just a reminder that um, imaginary roots have to come in conjugates. So if this is 2 plus 2i, then 2 minus 2i also has to be a root. 
Um, the same thing for 2 plus 3i. 2 minus 3i also has to be a root. That only works for imaginary and square root numbers. Negative 1, I don't need to have another one that goes with that. It can be on its own. So those are my additional roots, 2 minus 2i and 2 minus 3i. All right, let's look at our last, uh, last few problems here. Write the factors for a polynomial with the given roots. Only multiply. Okay, so this is saying to write factors. Remember, factors are in parentheses, and we need to think opposite. So we're going to think opposite to get our factors written. Um, so they give us these factors. Now remember, this right here, and I can say it differently on the test tomorrow or explain if I need to, multiplicity 2 means that this root is happening twice. So when I wrote that, I wrote x plus 5 squared because it's happening right opposite is why I changed the sign, and then squared because it's happening twice. 4i, there's another secret root that should go here, um, and you need to recognize that with 4i, there's also negative 4i. That's one of those secret roots that they aren't telling us about. So when we write our two factors, we're going to have x minus 4i, x plus 4i. Um, in the directions, I only want you to multiply so that you don't have imaginary or irrational left. Well, we have imaginary here, so I need to multiply. And remember on the front, we said the shortcut was to multiply the first, multiply the last. So I can work that out for us. That's x squared minus 16i squared. And I noted at the front side, too, i squared is negative 1. So I've got x squared minus 16 times negative 1. That should be positive 16, which is where I'm going to get my final factor, x squared plus 16. So my final, final answer, x plus 5 squared, x squared plus 16. Notice, I know that I'm done because there are no more imaginary or square roots left in this answer. Okay, um, next problem, identify the asymptotes um, and the transformations. So we already, we talked about this in class, right? This needs to be a one on top, so we just pull the two to the front. I'll make sure that it's probably already written like that for you in your test tomorrow. So inside is x, and we want to think opposite. So that means my x moves us right to, and there's an asymptote at x equals positive 2. Outside is y, and we think the same. So y is going to do two things. Adding or subtracting moves it. So y is going to move down 3, and there's my asymptote. Multiplying stretches or compresses. So y, right? y, I'm thinking vertical, and I want to think the same. So a 2 is going to stretch it bigger. So I said a vertical stretch of 2. On number 12, we have to do something very similar where we're just listing the transformations. So we crossed out the negative sign because we didn't want to have to deal with it. I'll make sure you don't have any negatives on your test tomorrow. Um, so inside is my x. Think opposite, left 2. x is negative 2, so I'm going to draw this asymptote right here, straight up and down. y, think the same, so move up 3. My y asymptote is at 3. There are no stretches or compressions, which means this these points should be over one, up one, over one, down one in their respective corners. It doesn't have to stretch vertically or horizontally in any way. It's just going to be those um, normal points right there. Okay, so that's all for the regular part of the video. The rest of it, all I'm going to do is show you... Uh, the answers for the next two pages so that you can see. And we, I am here to answer any question you want me to tomorrow. Okay, go back and try. Um, look at the similar problem if you get stuck on any of these, but these are your final answers. Uh, oh, I probably need to scroll up. All right, there we go. There's 13, 14, 15, and 16. And here's 17 at the bottom. All right, we've got 18, 19, and 20. And there's 21 at the bottom. 
as long as you have work shown for these, I will give you extra credit for um, completing this second page.